Um, yeah, so we have Sarah Kinderzma with us tonight, an MAT specialist. I have been seeing her since 2014, I think, when I started mm -hmm. seeing you. Um, and it has been life changing for me, really. Um, I have a rare condition and have tried just about everything. And um, in conjunction with everything else, Sarah has worked wonders. And I would try to explain MAT, but I'm sure I would butcher it. So <laughs> I will let Sarah do the explanation of that. Um, yeah. Thank you for being well, here. Thank you very much for the introduction. So the reason why I actually got into muscle activation was because of my own body. Uh, so at 12 year old, when I was 12, I was in a hockey accident where some girl accidentally cross-checked me from behind and I broke my L3, L4, L5. And whatever, you're 12 years old, you bounce back, right? But at 17, I was in so much pain, I actually couldn't bend over to put on my own socks. Now, what was interesting at 17 is that people couldn't blame my age because a lot of people say, oh, I'm just getting older. So those aches and pains are just normal. But at 17, they couldn't blame that. Instead, they blamed it on, oh, you just like your attention, right? So it's interesting when they can't find that fix, they find something to blame it on. But what was happening was when I had that stress and trauma done, um, my brain wasn't communicating properly to my muscles. So a perfect example is like what you guys are talking about. You guys are going for your walks, but there's ice. So instantly your body tenses up, right? So that's what was happening with my body. It didn't feel safe going into certain positions. So it was getting tight. So I was chronically tight, chronically in pain and not moving very well. But as soon as you slipped on those awesome grippers, all of a sudden your gait becomes normal again. And so that's what muscle activation does is it allows the brain to have the proper tools to problem solve motions. So it's not afraid. So another example that I give all my clients is if you wake up in the morning and you have to go to the bathroom, you know where the washroom is, there's no panic. But if you're stuck in traffic or you're stuck in an elevator and all of a sudden you have to go to the bathroom, it's a massive panic. And so that's the difference between the two. So muscle activation was actually invented by the sports trainer for the Denver Broncos. And what he wanted to know is how come these big football players one will be barely even touched, but out for the season. And then one guy will be completely annihilated, but he bounces back and he's fine. And what he noticed the difference was, was what was the asymmetries uh, leading up to that? So how, what was the structure of their system before they were hit onto the field? And that seemed to have a better indicator on how fast they were gonna bounce back. So the more things that were out of whack out of their bodies, the more likely just even a slight little bump was gonna take them out for the season. So what muscle activation is, I've got it written down on the board here, is there's four steps to it. And I know you can't really read it, but I'll, I'll read it out to you. So the first thing that we look at is your range of motion. So how are you moving? And so an example of that would be how much can you move up your arms? So what I want everyone to do right now is stand up for me. And I want you to stand up nice and tall and take one arm or both arms and just reach up to the ceiling as high as you can go. Now bring that arm down. Now I want you to slouch for me and then do the same thing. Do you notice with that slight little slouch, how much harder it is to bring that arm up versus when you stand up, all of a sudden it becomes a lot easier for you to stand up, correct? So what I do is I look at those range of motion differences. So let's just say one arm goes here, one arm goes here. Well, maybe it's got nothing to do with the shoulder, but maybe what's happened is your rib cage has collapsed just ever so slightly. So if we restore the rib cage, all of a sudden that shoulder opens right up. Now, the problem is, is if that shoulder stays stuck like that and you were to fall on it, for instance, it puts it in a very vulnerable position because it's already kind of in a limited range. And so that's what muscle activation does is it looks at a, how are you moving? More importantly, how are you not moving? And then it reprograms the brain to use the correct muscles for that. And the way that it does that is whatever muscle crosses a joint. So we'll say with the arm, right? So we've got a bicep, it attaches here, attaches somewhere here. Whatever joint it crosses is going to have an effect over. So our bicep is here, it can bend our elbow, it can lift our arm, but it can't kick our leg. So if you're showing me that you can't do this motion, I'm gonna to try to get the brain to be more aware that this muscle does this action so that you can restore that range of motion. Once we've done that and we've restored it, we'll recheck the range. And then I wanna see how strong is that? So are you able to do it for one bicep curl or are you able to do it for 30? Now, bicep curls don't matter. What really matters is walking, right? So if you really enjoy walking and you're like, hey, 
it's great till I hit about 3K and then my knee and my hip go. Well, I wanna make sure that your body is able to have those problem solving skills for those muscles so that you can enjoy whatever length of walk that you, you enjoy, right? Whether it's 3K or 30K. Um, and then what I do is I give you some exercises to uh, reestablish that pathway. So it's like giving you a phone number, but you've never repeated that phone number, you're gonna forget it. So that isometric just kind of solicits it. Um, so one example was me, obviously, when I was 17, going through a lot of pain, restoring my range. Uh, a lot of people look at me saying like, hey, you're still young, like you don't understand the whole mobility thing. What's been really neat is, especially through COVID, uh, we cohorted with our neighbor who's 63. He got into a terrible biking accident. He was biking, got hit off his bike by a car and his knee was all mangled. So he loves to hike, he loves to bike, but he wasn't able to do that. And so through MAT and through exercise, we were able to restore that. And now he's doing really cool things. He's able to squat. He's able to do a single leg hop on that leg. And so it's really cool to see someone who's had such a traumatic event and have bounced back through that. So, and I should preference that stress could be anything. It doesn't have to be trauma. Like mine was trauma and Glenn's was trauma, but it could be um, chemical trauma. So maybe um, either what you're eating isn't good for your body, or maybe you've taken some drugs that aren't good for your body. So for example, for me, when I broke my back, I was on Percocet and that changed the chemistry on how my brain could actually communicate to tissue. Um, it could be emotional trauma. It could be overuse. So if you're sitting and you've been sitting for 30 to 40 years at a desk job, it could change the way that the brain is functioning with those muscles. Um, so it's any level of stress on any of those things that kind of accumulate that that's what breaks down the communication to the brain, to the muscle. And that's what MAT actually restores. Um, but because this is such a small group, which is great, I would love to open up the floor for more questions to be a little bit more specific about what I do. It does sound impressive that little things, little tensions, I guess, might really reduce your abilities. And, uh, and I guess it's uh, relatively easy with some techniques and repetitions to, uh, to get you back in shape. So Yeah, that's exactly what MAT does. And what I like about it too is like, it's kind of in that in-between world where it's like, I don't feel hundred percent, but I'm not broken enough for physio yet. <laughs> and you want to prevent getting that hurt because you don't want to take time off the activities that you love doing. And something that I've noticed, and especially with Natasha, just becomes so much easier to do daily tasks because you're not having to think about it. And by think about it, I mean like the actual motion. So let's just say, for example, your shoulder is bothering you, putting up a dish, like doing dishes, you just don't want to do that because you don't want to lift your arm above your head. That's going to be harder. And so if you have the right muscles working for you, you're not even going to think twice about putting that cup at that top shelf because you can trust that movement to happen. I remember the first time I saw you, um, I came in and my, I think it was my right foot was quite turned out. It was, yeah. And, um, and it, I just thought that's how that foot was. It, I'd been to three different physiotherapists. I had seen chiropractors. I had seen so many different practitioners and my foot was still turned out. So I was just like, oh, okay. I walk out of there and both my feet were pointing straight. My posture all of a sudden was like, I could actually stand up straight. Everything was just so much easier um, to move. And, and the only, only noticeable bit was all of a sudden my foot was pointing straight. Um, I think the last time I saw you, you were working on, it wasn't last time, I think it was the time before my back was messed up. And all of a sudden she's working like down on my toes and I'm going, okay, I know it's all connected. And she said this before, right? And so I'm like, I know it's all connected, but my toes really. And then she's like, okay, try that range of motion again. And I do. And I'm like, that's amazing. Like my toes have now her working on my toes, got my back feeling better and things like that. It's. So I have a question there. Yeah, go ahead. Sarah, your background when you studied the anatomy of the body and physiotherapy, did you do anything in uh, kinesiology? I, I did do. Uh, yes, I have an undergrad at U of S for kinesiology. Uh, and you then I... Have? Sorry. Oh, sorry, I do have my undergrad at U of S for kinesiology. 
Um, and then afterwards, I went down to the States to go complete my master's in muscle activation. Yeah. And cool. what was interesting was actually in muscle activation, how do I want to word it? In university, if everything was textbook perfect, then I understood the knowledge for that, but it didn't apply to the real world. Yes. When I went to muscle activation, it was like, okay, well, here's real life scenarios when someone walks in and they're in pain and it doesn't necessarily go with what the textbook says. Yeah. So perfect example is that shoulder thing that I showed you guys before when you lean forward. So in university, they say, these are the muscles that are responsible for shoulder flexion for your arm to do this. Mm -hmm. But what they don't tell you is that if your shoulder blade isn't stable on your rib cage or your rib cage is in a weird position to start with that that could really affect how that shoulder is working. Yeah, of course. Yes. So yes, I, I definitely took anatomy and stuff in university. And I always tell people that I learned enough to pass the courses in university, but MAT is when I actually understood how to apply the information. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think of yoga practices? Any kind of movement practice is good as long as it doesn't push you out of the zone that you should be in. So what I mean by that is a lot of time yoga instructors will, will show you what a pose should look like, but should it look like that for you? And that's, that's the exactly. better question. Yeah. Uh, but any kind of movement practice is good. I definitely think that motion is lotion. So the more that you are active, the more that you are moving, the healthier your body is going to be. I think it's a huge mistake that when we are injured or we're not feeling good, that we decide to stop everything. I feel like that makes it a lot worse. Yeah, it's always always good in modification, you know, to or moderation to yes. say, okay, like a lot of people get hurt when they um they decide, oh, I'm gonna get on this regime, you know, it's January one and I'm gonna do all this. So they go out and they knock themselves out, and then it's like, oh, that didn't work and it's too much pain, and then they don't do anything. It's always uh it's always wise, I think, to consult with some sort of a fitness coach or someone to, to look at, like you said, this pose might be good. This exercise program regime might be okay for this individual, but this other person, no, that's not going to work based on, you know, more their, just their powers, their age. Age is a big thing. I know that I've mm -hmm. had to modify again um, what I used to do uh, from, from what I've been doing now that you know, I'm 70 plus, so I have to modify, okay, what am I about to? And then with injuries as well, uh, you can't push some youth injured a certain area. Um, I try the gentle yoga and the revive and restore yoga because I have found that that's, uh, that is helpful, you know, when combined with, it is also the mental um, situation where combined with a positive mind, meditation, and everything to to keep you going you know forward you're 100 percent correct and i always tell clients it's just like watering plants it's not like you can take any plant in the world and there's a certain amount of water that you have to water it you have to understand the plant's needs mm -hmm. in order to give it the right stuff so how much light uh, how much water all of that kind of stuff it's the same thing that applies with our bodies and as long as you're going to a trainer or you're going to a yoga instructor that really understands the needs for your body they can properly cater it to you, but it's all about the right amount of stimulus in order for your body to thrive. And you definitely need to take all of those into account. Well, I guess I'm not quite clear what you do. Yeah, Natasha was saying about doing something to her toes that improves yeah. something the back. And I'm well, not quite sure what you manipulate or press on or. Sure. Yeah, I can, I can go into more depth. So funny enough, my first session, the guy worked on my foot for my back too. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like on my foot's fine. So what muscle activation does is it looks at your body mechanics as a whole. So how does your ankle work? How does your knee work? How does your hip work? And once I've written down all those ranges, it starts painting a picture for me on what's working, what's not working. Mm. So in my case, with my back, I was having back pain, but because my ankles weren't working to absorb the pressure as I walked, it was actually putting all the force into my back. And so it wasn't allowing my back to heal. So once we got the ankles to work properly, all of a sudden my calf was actually taking the absorption of every step instead of it forcing into my back. 
So what's cool about muscle activation is obviously I do care where the pain is, but I kind of put that on the back burner because I want to see how is the body moving? Because sometimes where we're feeling the pain isn't necessarily where the issue is. And the best way I can describe that is if you're at work and you're doing all the work and other people are slacking, who's the one that starts complaining? The person doing all the work. And that's what happens with our bodies too. So because my ankle wasn't working properly, all that force is going into my back. My back was working extra hard. And then my back was getting cranky and complaining. And so that's how can we take a step backwards, look at how you're moving in every aspect. We look at all your joints and then it paints a picture. Okay, well, you're really stuck with this right rotation. So maybe that's how come it's affecting the way that your hip is wanting to turn out. So for example, this is what was going on with Natasha. Because her foot was out like this, it wasn't because her foot was turned out. It was actually because the hip was like this. So if your mm -hmm. hip is like this, naturally your foot's going to turn out, the other one's going to turn in and the way that it's going to present on the table, when I ask you to turn out, you can't turn out any further because you're already fully maxed out and you can't turn in on the side. So we worked on the muscles to actually correct where the hip was. So now the feet can actually face forward and now you'll have equal range with turning in, turning out on both sides. And that's what we look for. So we may not be perfectly symmetrical, but we want to make sure that both sides are moving efficiently enough so that it's not putting strain on the other muscles. So she kind of explained it, but I think to answer your question a little bit deeper, yeah. Charlie, too. So she basically asks you or helps you move through a range of motion with different parts of your body. And then she does the assessment that she was talking about. And then um, she palpates or like basically gently presses on, sometimes more gently than others, depending on what's going on. Um, it's, it's the connection points of the muscles, right? That's correct. Um, and then that it's sort of this gentle pressing motion that helps remind everything how it's supposed to work. And then when you do that range of motion test again, um, for me, it's a, extremely immediate. And I don't know if it is for everybody. I, I know my experience, but for me, right away, you can tell um, the change. And when I've been, when my husband's been getting it done, that's pretty fast. Is it, is that typical it, for everyone? It, Sarah? it is because it's a neurological thing. So what we're trying to do is turn on those light switches. So with that being said, if there's a neurological issue, MAT can't do anything about it. So let's say Parkinson's, MS, things that are actually inhibiting the nervous system. I can't just turn on the light switch for that. Uh, what MAT does is it allows a nervous connection. So if your brain's already connected to your bicep to remember that. And the principle that it uses on, if you were to pick up a box, but you have no idea how heavy it is, your body will sense how heavy that is. And the reason for that is we actually have sensory receptors in all of our muscle tissues and they look like little coils. And so palpating right at the attachment site is what sends this feedback loop up to the brain. It's the same way that personal trainers will be like, oh, are you engaging this? And they'll actually tap the muscle that you're supposed to be working so that your mind has that better connection with the muscle. So I always say that I kind of micromanage your system. I make sure all the muscles are functioning the way that they should be so that the gross movement patterns, like if you're gonna walk or hike or squat or do whatever your sports are, that it just, it knows which muscles to actually recruit to make that job effortless. That is impressive. Admittedly, <clears throat> having tried so many modalities, it pretty much seems like pure magic. It seems <clears throat> weird because, like, yeah, you go into a different area that may not even seem related, and all of a sudden you go and try something that was difficult for you before, and all of a sudden it becomes easy. And you say you studied this in the States. Uh, is, there I did. is there an association or a college of MAT or? Yeah, they actually just went into four different universities now. Uh, I think Utah, Seattle, and I forget the other two. When I was learning, I went down to just the headquarters of um, down in Colorado. And I actually trained under the guy who came up with muscle activation. I guess what I was thinking is there an association, like I guess uh, nurses and chiropractors and so on all have a. Oh, okay. I understand, like a governing body. Yeah. 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 We don't have one yet. Yeah. So it's hard to, like, are you thinking about claiming it for insurance purposes? Uh, not necessarily. I guess, I guess most professions have some kind of a regulating and uh, possibly disciplinary, if necessary, uh, association or. Uh, 
I'm sure I'll see that in my lifetime. It just, it's very, very new. Um, Greg Roscoff came out with it in 1999. He didn't really start teaching it until 2008. So in relative terms, it is in its infancy state. Uh, and like even the chiropractic, it took probably about 40 or 50 years before they even had a governing body. And it will be the same with MAT, but just hopefully a shorter time frame. Yeah. So it's pretty, pretty low risk. I guess you're not really doing adjustments like, uh, like a no adjustments. Or, right? No adjustments, not at all. No. Sometimes you get bonus cracks, but that just, they're just bonus. They're by accident. <laughs> I always find when your muscles actually are working that joint properly, sometimes you'll have that joint manipulation. It feels pretty good. It's your body self-adjusting physically more than anything else. Oh, that's exactly what it is. So are you the only one in Calgary or is there a, a few of you or? <laughs> There's 14 of us now. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. We are growing. That's, that's and, a pretty uh, fast growth. Well, what's nice about it too is like with COVID, all the university stuff went online. So now a lot of people don't have to travel to the States to get certified. Mm -hmm. uh, they can do it at home now. It's nice to reduce the barriers. Yeah. So is this your, your full-time work or? Uh... It, it is. So That's if somebody the... wanted to see you, Sarah, how would they go about yeah. doing it? I can put the link in the chat. <laughs> yeah, the link would be perfect. I work out of active sports therapy. It's a chiro clinic in the Southeast part of Calgary. Um, if that is too far, because Calgary is a big city. If you ever go to muscleactivation.com, you can always find a practitioner near you. Uh, they actually just changed their website. I find it a lot more user-friendly. So if you click the Calgary area, everyone that's certified will actually pop up. Um, but yeah, for me specifically, I, I work at Active Sports Therapy. It is off of McLeod in 99th, and uh, the link will be there if you want the phone number or the website to book on in. I always do free 15-minute meet and greets if you ever want to come in and just see if MAT is the right fit for you. Uh, and then afterwards, if you actually want a full assessment, it's actually an hour long. Active Sports Therapy. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Well, like you say, we're all uh, all aging. <laughs> well, I guess we're aging at the same rate, but not. Uh, um, yeah, some things might be age related. Some things might be easily uh, easily uh, improve improvable. Absolutely. Well, I see yeah. muscle muscle activation as the uh, is the group or as a. So the first one is where the location she works out of. Yeah. Um, and then the second one is the the official website for muscle activation technique. And then the third one is her own website um, where she goes into a little bit more depth. And there's a, bit, a few pictures that may help you understand a little bit more about what she does. Yeah, what's nice about that website is you can actually see pictures of me working on a client. So you can kind of see what a, a session would actually look like. And, and what, uh, web, which one is that, Sarah, where we can see the, you working with someone? Dynamism.ca. Dynamism.ca. Yeah. Okay, could you tell me um, how you would damage tendon? Sorry, can you repeat that question again? Um, I don't know. Can you hear me okay? It says my internet connection is unstable, so sorry about that. Um, how would you treat somebody with tendonitis? or like an injury to a hand tendon, for example. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? I did hear that, yes. Yeah. So how to deal with tendonitis. So tendonitis just tells me that there's inflammation in a tendon. So depending on what state it's at, if you've already done physio, that's kind of where I would recommend, especially if it's very acute. What I look at is what could be creating strain on that tendon to create it to be inflamed like that. So the analogy that I use, if one person's working, nobody else is, the guy who's working is the one that's going to be complaining right. that could be happening in the hand. So let's say, for example, there are more than three muscles in the hand, not working efficiently. It could put more strain onto that tendon, creating inflammation and then creating that pain. 
So I look at that range of motion, restore the range to see whether or not that takes the stress off the tendon and then therefore decrease the inflammation so that you don't have that tendonitis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes it's been, it's created also because a person is uh, overextending. They're, yep. uh, they're, they're pushing a certain part of their hand in particular to do something when you know, they, they've got to learn to relax a little bit. That, that's what I'm finding out now. Again, as I get older in my 70s is not to push as, as hard as I would have done something maybe, maybe even two or three years ago, right? Because that's when damage starts also. Do you, do you try to educate um, older people, older clients in maybe how to, how to modify or how to or maybe try exercises that maybe might be more tailored to that age group? Absolutely, yes. So we all have a safe range of motion that we can move in. Now, the problem is, is that if we keep on doing inappropriate modifications, we're limiting range by limiting range even further, and then you have less range to play with, right? Okay. So yes, age is a factor, right? We wanna make sure that as we're aging, we're aging gracefully, but we wanna make sure that we're not using age as an excuse for some of the limited of range. So what MAT really dives into is, is this an age thing or is it that there's just a missing link that we can get that muscle working better for you? So same thing with this, with my neighbor who got into that accident, right? Like he's 63, starting to, you know, go into that aging process, but he's got amazing mobility, even with that accident. And as he's aging, he's actually getting better range um, in everything, in his shoulder, in his knee, in his ankle. So it, Yes, I'll find modifications that suit you for where you're at, but I also don't like to say like, we need to limit range because you're getting older. Um, I, I didn't mean to say limit. Uh, I, I, I meant to explain, um, just be very cautious or careful about activities. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't, don't limit, but make sure it's tailored. I guess that would be a better word, tailored to, the appropriate age. Um, I have, Absolutely. I have friends in their early 70s that are still trying to play tennis like they did 10 years ago. And uh, and they start that off in the beginning of the season and then they're out for the rest of the season, you know. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it's better to tailor something and know exactly what to expect of your body. Yes, and appropriate load it. Like you like you can slowly start building it, but you have to understand where you're at to slowly start increasing that load, right? Because like I have friends that are 93, you can hike faster than I can and go up mountains, right? And so again, I don't think it's an age thing, but they're also not sitting on a couch for six months and being like, oh, it's hiking season. And then they go up like 11,000 foot. Like they, they make sure that they keep on building and doing it appropriately. And um, it just, I would apply that to sun tanning, right? So if I went from being in Canada with no sunlight and going to Mexico tomorrow, I'm going to be burnt. I'm going to be sore. I don't yeah. want to go outside. And so it's the same thing with the exercise. We want to give it in these appropriate doses so that you're not going to have that sunburned effect where you feel wrecked and you're out for the season. And, and it also an acceptance that uh, perhaps one is not going to be able to do as much as they had done like 20 years ago. Yeah, uh, that's I fair. Know, yeah, I know myself when I do my online Zoom fitness through Kirby, which is twice mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I started out a year and a half ago with the dumbbells using one that was about a kilometer, uh, not a kilometer, a um, couple of pounds, no, five pounds heavier than what I'm using now because I tried it and then I got some strain in the sh shoulder. So instead of pushing myself, I just thought, okay, maybe it's time to admit that instead of a eight pound dumbbell, go down to a five pound dumbbell mm -hmm. for some of the exercises, you know? Yep. So I, I would really, you know, when I look at it, I would encourage it to, but I like what you were saying. I'm sort of getting off topic here. I, I liked what you were saying about how muscle activation, like realizing that this muscle does not act separately. It's all, you know, posture has to be uh, involved. Um, you no know, posture can can really 
develop into some problem issues when you get older. Mm-hmm. Charlie has great posture, so he doesn't he doesn't have this problem, right? <laughs> I think you have great posture. I haven't seen you for quite a while. No, I'll have, no. one, I'll have to get on one of those walks or something. But I noticed most of the people on the Wild Rose walks they they've got good posture, like they they stand, they're not shooting their hips out, or when they walk, and you know things like that. So um, to me, it's always about posture because if your posture is bad like you were saying about Natasha with her foot going out, you know, often if you align something, then everything supports and aids the other ones, you know? Yeah. If all the muscles are doing its job and you're in proper you alignment, know. it life is just easier. So how long would it take if somebody say, for example, has been hiking or walking within some incorrect posture for 20 years, and then suddenly they're getting some hip problems or knee problems. Where would you begin on that, Sarah? I always begin in the same spot. I always look at how you're moving. Once I take account of everything that's moving well, what's not moving well, we start seeing how quickly we can make those changes on the table. And then I'm curious on how much stress is actually occurring in your life. So what I mean by that is um, we get you you know, looking pretty good on the table and you walk to the front desk to go pay. And then all of a sudden the hip goes back to how it was before you even walked in. Right. So that tells me, okay, the stress level is really low. So that tells me that's going to be a lot longer to see that progress Mm than someone who comes in, we get things to change. And a week later they come back and they're like, yeah, like everything held. I feel really good. So that tells me that I have to do not, um, it's going to take a lot less sessions to get them to where their goal is. But with that being said, too, I like MAT as kind of uh, a tune up, kind of like how you get your car in for a tune up. So if I'm going to go to the mountains every single weekend, I'm going to need more tune ups with that car. I'm going to need more oil changes. Right. So, for example, when I'm in a maintenance phase, I usually go every eight to 10 weeks for MAT. But right now I'm getting ready for a race. So now I go every three weeks because I want to make sure that my training isn't going to impede my function. Right. Right. because training is going to have a certain cost to my body and you feel it like you feel that effect of you know kind of pushing those limits so then by pushing those limits I'm taking away from my body bank account so I got to make sure that I'm putting that stuff back with self-care whether it may be mobility training MAT massage eating well like if I wasn't eating well it would also make everything fall apart Mm Um, so I just adjust how often I'm doing that depending on what's going on in my life. So if my stress levels, the more demands that I'm putting on my body is higher, that just means that I'm going to need more frequent sessions for it to actually work well. Nice. That's well put. Thank you. Yeah. No, thanks for the questions. Well, there's not too many of us, so I figure we got to keep the ball rolling here, right? I appreciate it. No, it's good. Yeah, it's great yeah. questions. I thought there'd be a lot more because it's it's such a vital topic. You know? Well, if you found this valuable, I mean, we have it recorded, so feel free to share it with others. Yeah. yeah. I'll get it posted Definitely. and I'll, I'll share the link in the email. Um, so that if you have friends that you want to pass it on to, you can pass it on as well. A lot, a lot of things seem to have low, low attendance and the, <clears throat> the <clears throat> Calgary Lifelong Learners walking group, well, it's sort of suspended right now. And uh, when we so it's not very active, and uh, I guess if the number of people watching the our church services live is is relatively small, and uh, well, I don't know, I guess people are getting a little zoomed out here. <laughs> so yeah. the zoom fatigue yeah. seems to be high right now. So. Is is there any way that uh, Natasha, though, Wednesday Wellness will manage to be live at some point? I know you're out of town, so this certainly works for you, but for um, any possibility like once a month um we're looking once the church opens up more um that's when we're looking to um be able to do that again because there's just i sure hope so i was over at the church the other day and it's just cavernous i'm looking at me thinking for god's sake you could get 10 people into this gymnasium with like 10 meters apart and there should be no problem so i don't really quite get Charlie, the hold up, I'll direct that at him. I don't, you know, I, I don't see why we can't have some functions of say maximum 10 people um, utilizing the gym, utilizing 
the lovely lounge upstairs. What do you think, Charlie? I'm just well, going to interrupt gonna... quickly before he answers because I, I know Sarah has to go train for that oh, race she's yeah. talking about. Oh, just... right. I didn't know how long three minutes. So I <laughs> just want to quickly oh. make sure if there's a last minute burning question, she might have time for that. But okay. How long is go. the session, Natasha? How Pardon? long was this session supposed to be tonight? Uh, well, she said she was free until 7.40, 7.45 at the absolute. Okay, perfect. I did know that. I missed that part. That's okay. And then I'll, I'll get on to Charlie on one of our walks, okay? We can stay on after. I'm just going to let Sarah go. because I. No, no, that's fine. I didn't know that it was, um, we should be winding up here. Yeah. Well, it is good to hear about your uh, your practice there, uh, Sarah. That does sound like it. Yeah, no, I, so many people. I appreciate you guys learning a little bit about a different modality that's yeah. out there. Yeah, it all it it what it does, Sarah, is it shows throws credence behind how I feel and what I, you know, I tell friends, I say, like you said about the 93-year-old, they don't just get out there and start hiking. Mm -hmm. You don't just pick up pick up a tennis racket or or whatever. You know, it's all about knowing and understanding so that you don't overextend because once especially after a certain age you do that damage it's really hard to get that body back you it know is. what are you training for sarah what's uh you're going yeah i'm home? doing a triathlon out in greece in april oh that's fantastic yeah yeah i wish you all the best and i hope yeah, to thanks. check out your website as well great so, thanks i'm sure you'll do very well yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure virtually meeting everyone. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Natasha. Yeah, see you next week. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.